Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Appointment with Death by Agatha Christie. So I'll get started by reading you the blurb. Among the towering red cliffs of Petra, like some monstrous swollen Buddha, sat the corpse of Mrs. Boynton. A tiny puncture mark on her wrist was the only sign of the fatal injection that had killed her. With only 24 hours available to solve the mystery, Hercule Poirot recalled a chance remark he'd overheard back in Jerusalem. You see, don't you, that she's got to be killed. Mrs. Boynton was, indeed, the most detestable woman he'd ever met. So, obviously, you can get from that that this is a Poirot book. And it's also interesting because it brings together sort of Christie's interest in archaeology. She was actually married to a man called Max Mallowan, who was an archaeologist. That was her second husband, I believe. Yes, it was. Um, so, it's kind of cool for that, for the setting. I mean, people are literally sleeping in caves and tents and stuff like that. What I didn't like so much was that it took about half of the book just to get to what you've just heard from the blurb. So the first 150 pages or so are all scene setting for it. And then eventually this horrible old woman gets killed. She is a horrible old woman. I saw uh, Brian from Brian's Bookshelves read and reviewed this recently as well. And I, th I think he said that he thought she was like the most detestable female character in all of Christie's oeuvre. So uh, yeah, I'll, check, I'll link Brian's review below if you want to go and check that out. He did enjoy it a bit more than I did. I I'll give this the rating now, actually, because why not? I gave it a 3 out of 5. It was okay. It wasn't Christie's best, but even at her worst, she's better than most, if that makes sense. For me, the reason it was a 3 out of 5 was because it disappointed me. I mean, it's a classic Hercule Poirot mystery, according to the front. And it was written, you know, it's mid-series, I think. I don't know. I don't have the list with me here. First published in 1938, so that's kind of when she was considered to be in a heyday, really, you know? So, I just, I was just expecting more from it, but it was okay. I'm going to go through and read some of the bits that I flagged. So, here is an early sort of indication of this old woman and the power she has over them. So, uh, yeah, but it's more than just that. Sarah was persistent. She's, oh, she's got them all so cowed, so positively under her thumb that it's, it's indecent. To have too much power is bad for women. Gerard agreed with sudden gravity. He shook his head. It is difficult for a woman not to abuse power. All right, Gerard. Jesus. I quite like this little uh, passage here as well. So, Mr. Cope rose. In America, he said, we're great believers in absolute freedom. Dr. Gerard rose also. He was unimpressed by the remark. He had heard it made before by people of many different nationalities. The illusion that freedom is the prerogative of one's own particular race is fairly widespread. Dr. Gerard was wiser. He knew that no race, no country, and no individual could be described as free. But he also knew that there were different degrees of bondage. He went up to bed thoughtful and interested. I like this. This is another Dr. Gerard quote as well. So, uh, Dr. Gerard said gravely, I believe at least in one of the chief tenets of the Christian faith, contentment with a lowly place. I am a doctor and I know that ambition, the desire to succeed, to have power, leads to most ills of the human soul. If the desire is realized, it leads to arrogance, violence, and final satiety. And if it is denied, ah, if it is denied, let all the asylums for the insane rise up and give their testimony. They are filled with human beings who were unable to face being mediocre, insignificant, ineffective, and who therefore created for themselves ways of escape from reality so as to be shut off from life itself forever. He's quite the character, isn't he? I like this little exchange as well. Lady Westholm looked with grim satisfaction after the departing car. Men always think they can impose upon women, she said. Sarah thought that it would be a brave man who thought he could impose upon Lady Westholm. Okay, let's read this little, this little exchange here. This gives you kind of a feel for Christie's attitude towards foreigners, I guess. The Frenchman suggested, because they take her a good deal away from home, that is understandable. Then he went on, what did you just say just now, Mrs. Boynton? Undoubtedly, it would be a very good idea to poison her, too. Undeniably, the simplest solution of that family problem. In fact, a great many women would be better poisoned. All women who have grown old and ugly. He made an expressive face. Sarah cried out, laughing. Oh, you Frenchman! You've got no use for any woman who isn't young and attractive. Gerard shrugged his shoulders. We are more honest about it, that is all. English women, they do not get up in tubes and trains for ugly women. No, no. How depressing life is, said Sarah with a sigh. 
we get a, a quote from Sarah here. There's a lot of stuff on gender I'm noticing here. So she goes, uh, I'm sorry, but I do hate this differentiation between the sexes. The modern girl has a thoroughly business-like attitude towards life. That sort of thing. It's not a bit true. Some girls are business-like and some aren't. Some men are sentimental and muddle-headed. Others are clear-headed and logical. There are just different types of brains. Sex only matters where sex is directly concerned. Here we go. This is how far into the book the character dies. So... And then we go into part two, and then we go straight to Poirot, I believe. Yeah, here we go, there's Poirot. We have here a reference to murder on the Orient Express, so a character goes, this is Nadine, she says, I have heard, Monsieur Poirot, that once in that affair of the Orient Express, you accepted an official verdict of what had happened. Poirot looked at her curiously. I wonder who told you that? Is it true? He said slowly, that case was different. I'm assuming this here is, uh, this is being this is being said ironically, but a character goes always, always I am blamed when anything happens. Say always my fault, always my fault. When Lady Ellen Hunt sprained her ankle coming down from place of sacrifice, it my fault. Though she would go high-heeled shoes, and she's sixty at least, perhaps seventy. My life all one misery. Ah, what with miseries and iniquities Jews do to us. Jesus. Anyway, so that's all I'm going to say on this one, but all in all, I did enjoy it, I guess. It, it wasn't Christie's best, like I say, but I mean, I, I enjoy reading Christie in general, so it was just a bit of a letdown, but I mean, you know, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's just not what I'd start with, perhaps. So anyway, on that note, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.